Okay, you may not be done with it, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and start going over it. That's 10 minutes. If this were like a free response, you'd have on average about five minutes longer. All right, so the graph of some derivative f prime of a continuous function. So I put that in bold. It probably wouldn't be in bold, but that's important because the function f whose derivative, this is the derivative of, is continuous. And if you notice, the derivative function is not, but f is uh, from 0 to 9. Answer the following questions, complete sentences. Okay, so make sense of what you got. This is f prime, so whether you write it or you say it in your head just kind of makes sense. The y values are the slopes of f, and then the slopes of this graph are the concavities of f. That's just orienting yourself to what is given, okay? <clears throat> Uh, I should probably, if you're going to use this as like a defense of some of your justifications, you might want to say slopes of F prime and the Y values, bless you, bless you, of F prime. Oops. Nope. Nope. Cancel. Y values of F prime. But if you're only using it for your own uh, benefit, you don't need to be that specific. But in general, if you just say the Y values or the slopes and you don't say of what, it's, it's ambiguous, believe it or not. Okay, so um, what intervals or interval is the function f increasing? Well, that's going to be when this uh, f prime is positive. That's from 0 to 2, and 4 to 6, and 8 to 9. That's where the derivative is positive. So it says open intervals. So we'll say in a complete sentence here, get used to it, f is increasing on the open interval from 0 to 2, union 4 to 6, union eight to nine, and there are no units. If there were like time, we would put like seconds or something at the end, but there's no units. And you could say because on these intervals, F prime is greater than zero. Now, if you didn't say F is increasing on, you just wrote the intervals down, that would be fine in this case, simply because A is only asking you that's that one question. But remember, sometimes part A might ask you, where is it increasing, question mark, and decreasing. So now, if you're, if you're going to be labeling both, you need to specify which is which. So if you just get in the habit of writing full sentences, you'd be in good shape. And I guess we'd put a parenthesis at the end. Not a parenthesis. That's a what? That's a period. My bad. What about an exclamation point at the end, because we're excited? Yeah, don't do that, because in math, that's zero factorial, and that's actually one, believe it or not. So maybe a period, right? Kind of subdued enthusiasm, right? Uh, okay, so wh which part of that is the justification? Second. The second part, yeah. So you're, you're basically explaining what you were looking for on the graph to come up with those intervals. Uh, where do we have a local max or local min? All right, so you have to first identify the critical values. So you say f prime equals zero or f prime equals d and e. Those are your two cases. And since the function f is continuous everywhere, its domain is all real numbers. So any value that makes the derivative undefined will be in the domain of f. That's very important. So where is this graph, because this is f prime, 0, 2, 4, and 8? So underneath f prime equals 0, we'll say x equals 2, 4, and 8. If you want to put CVs on your own, colon, you know, and that doesn't hurt. You won't lose points if you don't have that. And where is this graph undefined? At 6. And it's not because there's a jump. It's because neither one of those are closed and there's not a dot somewhere else. If one of those had been closed, then the function would be defined there. But because the function doesn't have a ordered pair, that's a uh, uh, an possible uh, local maximum. It's a critical value, so x equals 6. So now that we've identified the PIVs, uh, we could use the first derivative test, which is always a good idea when you have f prime's graph, because remember, f prime is better than a number line chart. So let's just kind of make sense of it here so we can uh, we'll write our sentences and then paste them down there. At 2, f prime changes from positive to negative, so that should be a local what? Max. At 4, f prime changes from negative to positive, so that should be a local min. Over at 8, f prime changes from negative to positive, so that should also be a local min. 
And what about six? Immediately to the left of six, F prime is positive. And immediately to the right of six, F prime is negative. And remember, because F is continuous, we can use the first derivative test there. So, yeah, this, this will work. So we're going to have two of each. And so we can clump them together. We could say then um, F has local maxes at x equals 2 and x equals 6, comma, because f prime, not the graph, but f prime changes from positive to negative. Now, here's if you want to judiciously say at these points, then that would be okay, because they're clearly defined in that same sentence. Um, or you could just say at x equals 2 and x equals 6 again. And then similarly, f has local mins. Um, I guess we don't need to put an apostrophe because it's, it's abbreviation, not an acronym. It's plural. Um, has local mins at x equals 4 and x equals 8 because it kind of gets old and boring. F prime changes from negative to positive. I'll do this from the other way. Negative to positive at x equals 4 and x equals 8. All right, so it's a lot of writing, and if it's getting boring to you, that's good. That means that you've, you've probably got it down. If you deviate from that script, you risk not getting full credit. So uh, just be, be careful if you do that. All right, so if we had just said that without doing this first, it would be kind of an incomplete argument, okay? All right, um, notice if, if this, uh, well, yeah. Um, okay, on what intervals is F concave down justified? All right, so concave down, the concavity of F are the slopes of this graph. And where F is concave down, this function has negative slopes. So it's decreasing. So it's just going to be on the open interval from 0 to 3. And you could assume that's 3 if there's a dot there and it coincides with the point. So from 0 to 3. Um, so F is concave down. Again, getting in the habit of writing in a complete sentence. Um, you could say for 0 less than X less than 3 if you want to do that. Or you could say on the interval from 0 to 3. Or you could say on x epsilon 0 to 3, so a lot of different ways to do that. Um, and there's no units, so then we could say uh, because the slopes, the slopes of f prime are less than 0 on this interval. Can you say negative or is that No, you could say negative, yeah, absolutely. You could say f prime is negative, you can write it out. Now, Believe it or not, if you just said since f prime is decreasing on this interval, you would still get credit for that. But I would, I would just say kind of stay away from increasing, decreasing for justifications because it doesn't fly for the first derivative test. You can't say f has a local max, like if this is f. f has a local max right there at x equals c since f goes from increasing to decreasing at c. That would not get any credit, even though it's true. Uh, you need to talk about a sign change in the slopes. So, in general, if you always talk about a sign or a sign change, you'll be in good shape. And again, if you didn't say F is concave down, but you just answered it with the interval, you'd be fine because that's the only thing it's addressing in this question. State the inflection values of F. Uh, Mississippi. I think that's wrong. State them. Okay, so just list them, I guess, the inflection values. All right, so we need to find the PIVs. That's going to be where F double prime is zero or F double prime equals DNE. Now here's the deal. If you haven't said how the graph that was given to you is related to F double prime, you might not get full credit. So if you did say way up here that uh, the slopes of F prime are the concavities of F, that's enough to, to, to get credit. Or you could just not say that and say, okay, I want to know then where the slopes of F prime equals zero or I want to know where the slopes of F prime equal DNE. That's another way to do it. But you do want to make sure you're, you're 
connecting what's given to what you're actually looking at. Okay? Don't just assume that, oh, everyone's going to know when I talk about the derivative of a function, I'm looking at its slopes. All right, so now I know exactly what I'm looking for. I want to know where the slopes of this graph are zero or undefined. So let me get rid of some of this highlighted stuff. I have a zero slope at three, and that's it. Do we have any undefined slopes? At six, right? Six is an undefined slope because f prime is undefined, therefore its derivative is undefined, right? Remember, any discontinuity uh, is going to be a place where a derivative doesn't exist. So it's at three and six. So at three and six. X equals three under that one. X equals six under that one. And if you want to help yourself, you can put PIVs right there. All right, and so now to determine if they're actual inflection values, we're going to do the same thing we did over here with the local max and mins. We're going to look for a sign change. But now instead of looking for a sign change in the y values, we're going to be looking for a sign change in the slopes signs, okay? So notice over here, f prime goes from decreasing to increasing. Well, what we'll say is the slopes of f prime go from negative to positive. All right, so let's do that at 3. Uh, f has an inflection value at x equals 3, comma, because the slopes of f prime, the slopes of f prime. I know exactly what you're looking at now on the graph. The slopes of f prime, uh, you could say go from or change from. It goes fewer letters. That's fine. Go from negative to positive at x equals 3. And then we can look at the other one. At 6, the slope to the left of 6 is a positive number because it's increasing. And to the right of 6, the slope is also a positive number. So is there a sign change in the slope there? No. So it's not going to be an inflection value. Now you have to decide, do you need to address the one that doesn't work, or can you just walk away? Based on the instructions here, what would you think? Would you need to account for it not being an inflection value? No, you could just walk away. The wording would be, at each possible inflection value, determine if F has an inflection value or not. Then you would have to address all the possible inflection values. Same thing for local max or mins. It would say, at each critical value, determine if the function F has a local max, local min, or neither. But if it just says, find the local max, find the local min, find the inflection values, that's it. Now, the way that they typically set up questions is the one that most students will forget to consider Y'all, again, are not most students. Where the derivative is undefined, that's usually going to end up being one, so that if you forget about it, you're penalized. But in this case, if you had not considered that, you would have been lucky, just, just flat out lucky. Okay, and then finally, assuming, again, that we're starting at 0, 0, sketch a possible graph of f, and then can we determine the x values where the function attains its absolute max or min? All right, so let's clear all this out. 0, 0. So remember, we did this yesterday. Every time the y values or the slope values change signs, we're going to reassess, and we're going to draw one part of the circle. All right, so from 0 to 2, we have positive y values, negative slopes. If you always address the y values first and then the slope second, you could say it's positive, negative, and then just shift it up or rung on the ladder. That means increasing concave down, right? Increasing concave down is going to look something like that, okay? I don't know how high to go. So I'll just go some arbitrary amount. Now from 2 to 3, I have negative y values, negative slope. Negative, negative is decreasing concave down, decreasing concave down. Okay. From 3 to 4, I have negative y values, positive slopes. Negative, positive is decreasing concave up, decreasing concave up. Okay, there we go. And then uh, from 4 to 6, I have positive, positive. That's increasing Concave up, increasing concave up. Now, notice it's, it goes up about the same rate that it went down from 0 to 2. So if you, if you just stop it right there, that's fine. Or maybe, maybe you kind of got, you went up a little higher, something like that. It's entirely up to you, okay? Right now, we're not really doing it quantitatively. So I'll just, I'll just stop right there. And then from 6 to 8, we have negative y values, positive slopes. 
That's negative positive, so that's decreasing concave up. Ooh, that's interesting, decreasing concave up. And then from 8 to 9, we have positive positive again, so that's increasing concave up. All right, so there we go. Uh, notice what we had going on at 6. It is a local max. You can clearly see that now. And it's a possible inflection value because the second derivative is undefined there because the first derivative is. But there's no change in concavity there, right? You can see it's concave up to the left and right. Um, okay, so there it would be a possible graph. Let's label it F. And if yours, if yours actually bounced off the x-axis or went below the x-axis, or maybe at 2, 6, and 9 you have it a little higher than I do, that's fine. No big deal. Okay, so for this one, uh, assuming that f is 0, is it possible to determine the x value where f attains its absolute maximum? Well, the candidates were at 2, 6, and 9. I think we're going to be able to discern, at least from my sketch, which one of those is the tallest of the three. We're guaranteed to have one by the EVT, but I don't know where it's going to occur. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to I'm not going to hazard a guess there. So I'm going to say uh, no. We'll just say no. It doesn't say to justify. What about an absolute min? I said yours might go below the x-axis, right? If yours goes below the x-axis, then you could have a possible min at your local mins or at the left endpoint. So this one also is not as intuitive as to where the min is. But it's a little bit easier to make a, a claim that it's the left endpoint because let's talk about this. We could look at now how it's going up and down and for what duration. The y value that it's going up is starting out at 3, and it's going up for a span of 2 units. Then it's going down for a span of 2 units, but only at a rate that equals 1. So it doesn't go down as fast as it goes up. It's probably not going to get below the x-axis. So when you start doing quantitative analysis, you're going to be able to say, yeah, it's at the left end point. But qualitatively, not sure. So we'll just say no. And that'll end that one. So... Uh, have a super-duper fantastic, awesome, wonderful lunch.